it's like we don't know that healthcare is hard. We don't know why those lectures are still there. Okay, so we're on chapter eight now. And <clears throat> chapter eight is a, uh, a sort of shift, okay? So we've been focused the last few chapters on uh, system model solutions, okay? Different ways we can solve them and different properties that they have. First order, second order systems, input output ODE solutions using superposition and the differentiation property. We were very fond of those two. And just looking at uh, stability as well, like those, those types of properties of systems. And then we also were looking at the connection with the state space model where eigenvalues are just identical to the roots of the characteristic equation for an input output ODE. Um, and so the eigenvalues determine stability and all that. And then we learned how to solve those state equations directly, the, uh, the state space models directly. And that was a very, um, I mean, it took a little while to derive it, but once we have that form, it's in a pretty nice form. Uh, the solutions are mostly governed by the state transition matrix. So um, we learned how to find the state transition matrix, finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the A matrix and doing a transformation. And yeah, that was pretty much that. We learned at the very end how to use MATLAB to simulate, which we had seen a little bit of that before. Uh, I had gone through that a little bit in the mechatronics course, but it was a bit of a refresher for us. And uh, now we're going to take uh, uh, a step sort of to the side. We're actually going to kind of loop back in a way to um, look at how to model fluid and thermal systems in a lumped parameter modeling technique. And that, that's a process that we learned how to do. It's going to be very similar to what we learned in uh, chapters two and three of the system dynamics uh, notes that we have here uh, for electrical and mechanical systems. So remember the three energy domains we've considered so far are electrical systems, translational mechanical systems, and rotational mechanical systems. Those are the three that we've looked at, and we've looked at transducers um, um, among those three. Um, and now we're going to add two new types. So I've promised this for a while, and now we're finally here. Um, and it's going to be very similar to what we did for electrical and mechanical systems. So we now consider the lumped parameter modeling of fluid systems and thermal systems. The linear graph-based state space modeling techniques of chapters 2 to 4 are called back up to service for this purpose. Recall that this method defines several types of discrete elements in an energy domain. So in chapters two and three, we uh, defined electrical and mechanical uh, energy domains. Also recall from chapter four that energy transducing elements allow energy to flow among domains. So that's like the, the motor or the generator. Th that was the quintessential example we used for electromechanical transduction. Uh, in this chapter, we introduce fluid and thermal energy domains, the uh, discrete elements uh, that are associated with them, and the energy transducing elements um, that, that transfer energy among these different domains. Um, we're going to look at a few, but there are a lot more examples of this. So when you introduce more and more domains, you can have like fluid mechanical uh, uh, energy transduction, and then you can have um, the like electrical can go to mechanical, which can go to fluid, and maybe even thermal. Like they, they can all be sort of coupled together. So we're only going to look at a couple examples. Um, the textbook by Raoul and Wormley has uh, several more examples. I encourage you to look at those. Those are, uh, those are presented in the Raoul and Wormley text back in those earlier chapters. Uh, I forget which numbers they are in that text, but they're, they're earlier chapters uh, where they introduce the electrical and the mechanical. They also introduce thermal and fluid uh, at the same time. 
what we did was we just we took electrical and mechanical and we took that ball and ran with it and now we're going back and we're going to pick up the fluid and thermal ball and run with it too um, but we already know the path to run we already ran it with electrical and mechanical systems so it's it's going to be just a matter of defining what the different um, uh, elements are in each domain and then we can immediately start applying the same methods so that's Nice, and, and we'll, we'll see how you can kind of start to do this. And while we're doing this, keep in mind um, that although these five energy domains, if you will, are probably the five most important for you as mechanical engineers, um, you can easily bring in new energy domain types and uh, define A-type, T-type, um, D-type elements for them. Well, I shouldn't say easily. It, it would take some work uh, if there's no literature on it, but you could extend these ideas beyond this. So when, pay attention when we're doing, when we're defining these. I mean, I'm not going to require it of you in you know, exams to come up with a new, a new uh, uh, you know, A-type element for some other type of system, like a biological system or something. But it's something that you could extend uh, um, with a little bit of work. And I think that it's good to think like that. To think like, oh, a lot of these systems are just dynamic systems. We could model them. What would an A-type be in this, in this uh, energy domain? So um, it's good to keep in mind. So the strong analogs between mechanical and electrical systems from chapter two are expanded to include fluid and thermal systems. This generalization allows us to include, in addition to electromechanical systems, interdomain systems, including electrical, mechanical, fluid, and thermal. Uh, so this chapter begins by defining lump parameter elements for fluid and thermal systems. So that's the beginning. Uh, we then categorize these into A, T, and D type elements, allowing us to immediately construct linear graphs and normal trees in the manner of chapter two. And also we're gonna do sources as well, so. A, T, D, and sources. Uh, we can then directly apply the methods of chapter three to construct state-space models of systems that include fluid and thermal elements. So then, like the rest of it, once we have a linear graph, we're off to the races. Uh, so that's, our goal is to get to the point where we can construct a linear graph, write elemental equations. Continuity and compatibility equations will be identical to what they looked like before. Nothing will change there. The variables will be different because we're going to use like pressure and uh, uh, volumetric flow rate as our power flow variables for a fluid system, for instance. So when you write those equations, they're going to have those variables in them, but they're going to look just like the electrical system equations and the mechanical system equations, et cetera. OK. Any questions on our broad uh, program here? Cool.